Hello everybody. I am Dr. Françoise Wilhelmi de Toledo, uh, the scientific director of the Buchinger Wilhelmi Clinics in Überlingen, south of Germany, and Marbella, south of Spain. Today, I'm very happy to present you a um, review article that has been published in 2020, in June, some days ago, in Annals of Medicine. The authors are, are Francisca Grundler, my co-author and myself, and the partners we have in Milan, um, specialist on lipids, Professore Cesare Sirtori and Massimiliano Ruccica. This is um, a topic of fasting, of course, this is our topic, and a review gives you the, the possibility to make an overview of, over a topic. And um, I was very happy to have this opportunity since I started fasting myself exactly this year, 50 years ago, and I was 17. So it gives me the opportunity to really pull back the film of my life, which have been really uh, impressed by the practice of fasting since the age of 17. So when I started, nobody knew fasting. And uh, it was very difficult, even during my whole study of medicine, to find people who could tell me uh, the physiology of fasting, the use of fasting, the therapeutic effects of fasting. None of my professors knew what I was talking about when I was talking about fasting by humans. They knew that you had a, a pathological metabolism resembling fasting when you had um, diabetes, decompensated diabetes type 2. But except of that, the positive effects I had felt myself, you know, the improvement of the mood, the energy you get by fasting. At that time, I was very healthy. And then afterwards, all the inflammatory processes you can improve through fasting. And I discovered immediately long-term fasting. So it was such a life-changing experience that I thought uh, studying medicine, which gave me the, the, the keys. And I had to find the keys myself of the physiology of fasting and all these topics. So I started looking at the literature. And when you look at the beginning of the 20th century, there you find the really first publications, scientific publications, like the ones of, of Benedict in 1930. He observed one person, but very thoroughly, fasting during 30 days, 31 days even, and safely. So this um, subject um, could reintroduce slowly the food and feel safe and have no problem. Uh, he, Benedict, uh, described the whole evolution and showed that it was possible to fa uh, fast so long. In the beginning of the 20th century, you had a lot of um, hunger artists, they were called like this, who exhibit themselves during weeks uh, where they really were controlled for having no food. And uh, one of them is Tanner. And there is a wonderful article from Steve Hendricks, a journalist who wrote the uh, um, astonishing study uh, or history of this guy who um, just uh, was unbelievably um, alive uh, during 40 days, which nobody could imagine before the people thought after two or three days you will die. So you see, it's very recent that we know scientifically documented that it's possible to fast long term. Um, and then uh, during the whole 20th century, we have studies of animals, free living animals are the ones who are studied. And we know that it's the strategy of humans and animals according to the seasons. Before they could conserve the food, humans could conserve the food. And now animals can't conserve the food for long periods of fasting, or long winter times, or when they do the, the birds do migrations of, uh, over the oceans. It can be uh, a migration from um, thousand or two thousand kilometers without food and without drink. So they use practically their own body uh, structures as fuel, of course, the fat. The fat is the most important fuel uh, for long-term fasting and also for short-term, but we will come back to that. 
Uh, so there are a lot of publications, especially the penguins in, in Antarctica and the migrating bird and a lot of other species, which I could um, read. And I met some of the researchers like the professor Yvon Le Mao, who have published a lot and who was for me a source of information. I was for him also a new source of information because he had studied all the animals, but he learned that he could fast himself which at the beginning was for him just far out. And now he's fasting since many years, every year, uh, for two to three weeks, and uh, his wife and his family too. So now um, we um, come to the um, religions because the religions have known the fasting since ever. All the religions have periods of restriction of food, more or long. Sometimes it's like in the Ramadan, a sort of time-restricted eating and intermittent fasting over 40 days or uh, a month. Uh, in Christianity is the, is the land. Uh, you have 40 days of restrictions. In other religions, the Jewish Judaism, you have 24 hours of no food and no drink. So, but in all the years, uh, you the religions have days where, where it's restricted or you cannot eat some food or some others. Now let's come to the 60s and the 70s. It was after the World War II. And in the world, in the privileged world uh, that started being industrialized after the war, obesity started. And so long-term fasting, but very long-term fasting was used to treat morbid obesity. And it was extremely interesting because some of the pioneers of the what was called at that time the zero calorie diet, lived near to our clinic in south of Germany. And this is Professor D. Knight, Professor Wexler, and they used at the beginning for treating morbid obesity very long fasting periods. And they wrote in the first article they wrote, um, it's safe to fast until 100 days. Uh, longer you have to make um, nitrogen balances. So they were all polarized on proteins. What you had to do to fast long term, even if you were morbid obese, meaning that you really had a lot of calories in reserve, uh, was just to watch the proteins. So that was the approach of after the, the war. Of course, with such long periods, and then they thought it was good to introduce the protein diets. <clears throat> One of the protein diets led to the death of, uh, of, of around 40 person that was a liquid protein diet. It was a bad protein uh, composition. And then um, everybody said fasting is dangerous. It was not fasting, it was a bad substitution. But they reduced the fasting time to three weeks and they changed from fasting to protein diets. And since then, the role of proteins and the necessity to substitute the proteins have never been, has never been put in question again. So <clears throat> we come slowly, not to the beginning of the 20th century, where it was the first time a scientist realized it's possible to fast on the long term. But now we are at the beginning of the 21st century. And there you come from a totally different perspective. The fasting is not observed in humans, but is first observed in laboratory animals. Well, there is a little period of calorie restriction. Uh, the champion of it was Roy Walford and, and others who experimented on himself the calorie restriction. About They ate about 70% of the normal food they would eat every day normally. And so they would diminish their weight, they would diminish their um, abdominal circumference, they would have no diabetes, uh, normal glucose and lipid regulation. Um, but it is extremely difficult. And slowly um, they discovered that maybe if you stop eating for one or two days or for some hours, maybe this could replace this lifelong calorie restriction where it's already so difficult today to eat normally than to eat a third of the quantity less than is normal. This is really only possible for people who have an extreme self-discipline or maybe don't care so much about food. <clears throat> but of course, 
uh, the positive effects on health were striking. And now we come to the longevity studies. Roy Walford one was one of the ones who start, uh, showed that nutritional strategies like limiting the calories were leading to a longer lifespan, at least in animals, because in humans it's difficult to really measure the lifespan. You need three generations of researchers because humans live uh, today until more than 80 years. So in animals it's easy when you have an animal living some months, then you can see, or even 12 years, um, then you can see, of course, the differences in a study which uh, a team can follow over so, so long times. So the fasting was rediscovered, if you want, in the continuity of the calorie restriction. Some research has noticed with mice or with flies or with worms or even with yeasts that actually when you limit the intake of calories, you prolong the lifespan and the organisms are healthier, they develop less, less disorders. In the 21st century, we have um, an extraordinary amount of studies showing the advantages of short fasting, short-term fasting, intermittent fasting, um, and also of some special uh, aspect like the time-restricted eating. And at the same time, parallel to and in the time of uh, obesity studies, uh, you replace the fasting by the very low calorie diets, which was a formula would create a market and made out of the fasting a product that could, of course, sell and finance the research and finance, of course, uh, a whole um, um, economical segment. And today we have a similar um, development. Uh, the fasting, the short term fasting, uh, tends to be replaced by drugs or uh, diets that emit some aspects of the fasting. So I will um, make a special little video on the classification of fasting regimens uh, that you can uh, look if you are interested in that topic. And at the same time, I would describe out of a review um, the long-term fasting, which is the specialty of the clinics uh, which uh, I work in, and this is the Buchinger Wilhelmi Clinics, which are specialized since almost 100 years in long-term fasting, which had started a decade ago uh, to themselves document the sci scientifically uh, the effects, the safety, and the therapeutical um, uh, validity of uh, fasting long-term. This was uh, my intention to wake your appetite for fasting, but also for reading the review called Unraveling the Health Effects of Fasting, a long road from obesity treatment to healthy lifespan increase and improved cognition. You can of course subscribe to our channel too if you are really interested. Um, all the best, stay healthy, stay hungry like uh, Steve Jobs said, and uh, try the fast on your own with good guidance. <music>